We recommend this product be installed by a competent gunsmith. Modification of your firearm may nullify the warranty of the firearms manufacturer. No liability is expressed or implied for damage or injury which may occur from improper use or installation of this product. You are responsible for the safe handling legalities and use of your firearm. Warning! Always wear safety glasses when working on firearms. For installation of the ultimate striker block, you'll need a hammer, an aluminum or brass punch, preferably wrapped in tape, a diamond lap, and a 1 16th Allen wrench. When removing the rear sight from the MP shield, you're going to have to use a bench vise, and we recommend smooth jaws. What I like to do is I like to take the Apex product card that came with the item, and I fold it in thirds to make a vise pad out of it. I'll put the slide into that, and I'll drop it down into the vise jaws, and then clamp onto it. Be aware of crushing the slide with the vise. If you go too hard, you can crush the slide. The factory rear sight set screw uses a 1 16th Allen wrench to be removed. Because we're going to be hammering the sight out, I recommend complete removal of the screw at this point. From here, we need to remove the rear sight from the right to the left. I have my aluminum punch wrapped in tape. I'm going to put the punch right on the angle right at the back of the slide, right into the dovetail. I will angle it down roughly 45 degrees as I, as I hit it with the hammer. From here, I'll tap the sight out until the side of the sight meets the center of the slide. Be aware that sometimes the rear sights are very difficult to remove. I recommend a smaller hammer, such as a jeweler's hammer, for this process as opposed to a larger hammer. Once I get my sight in position, as I remove my punch, you can see the rear sight washer, the, the washer under the rear sight, uh, sticking up. That is under spring tension, so don't pull the punch away or it will spring off. At this point, remove the striker block washer and the striker block spring and set them aside. If you're working on the 45 shield, you'll only want to replace the spring. Any other shield, you'll want to replace the entire striker block mechanism. If the striker block doesn't come out readily with a pin punch, you may need to pull the, cock the striker back slightly. To do so, I remove the slide from the vise. I'll use my aluminum pin punch with the tape. I'll put it on the end of the striker and I'll use my thumb to press it forward. From here, I'll use the pin punch and I'll press the striker block out of the slide. Then I can grab onto it and remove it. The differences in striker blocks are as follows. This is the 45 shield striker block, has kind of a hat at the top. The factory striker block for the 9 and 40 shield, including most other MMPs, is this one in the middle, kind of has a beveled edge. The Apex striker block has a radius edge, a polished tip, and typically a brown or black body. You only need to install this one in the 9 or 40 caliber shield, as the one on the 45 works as it is. Now we're going to put the Apex striker block spring onto the factory washer. All you have to do is remove the spring from the washer by pulling it off. Take the, the Apex spring and put it on the, onto the little nub that's on the end of the washer. Install the Apex spring into the, into the striker block and seat it all the way down. There should be a little bit of spring tension on it at this point. I'll take the Talon Tactical tool that comes with the kit, put it on the edge of the dovetail. I'll use my pin punch and press the plunger down, the washer down into the hole sliding the talent tool all the way across, letting it overtake my pin until I hit the sight. At, now, I'll hold, this, I'll hold this, the talent tool in place while I grab my hammer and start driving the sight back across and pushing the talent tool out. With the talent tool in place, I'll put my palm against the talent tool and I'll use my other hand to grab the pin punch. From here, I'll take my hammer and I'll drive this, the sight back across while allowing the, the talent tool to get pushed out. And as I go, eventually the talent tool will fall off the end. And now I can hold my pin punch on the other side and tap it across. At this point, I'm trying to recenter the rear sight in the slide. Recommend using calipers to measure from the side to the sight on both sides and get equal measurements to make sure your sight re is recentered. Once you've done that, take your rear sight set screw. Reinstall, torque it down till it's snug, which isn't a lot, and remove it, and you're finished. Once the rear sight's reinstalled, we want to do a safety check as well. We'll flip the slide over. We'll press on the striker from the back and make sure it does not protrude into the breech, which in this case it doesn't. I'll press the striker block down and press the striker up, in which case it does protrude into the breech. When I release the striker block and let go of the striker, it should pop back and re-engage the lock. 
As with any time you work on sites, you're going to want to go to the range and proof that make, and make sure they're back on target. What you can do to, at the start is take a pencil mark from the site to the slide and just mark it ever so slightly so you can realign it later. If you have any trouble in the installation process, feel free to call customer service. We recommend having a camera phone nearby so you can send photos if they request them. This will greatly help our troubleshooting process.